Hello, I'm Arielle, and I'm here on Yoga Television with Dr. Swami Ramananda Maharaj, the author of the books Bliss Now and From India with Love. Swamiji, thank you for inviting us to your beautiful Indian palace here in Las Vegas. Namaste, Ariel, and I'm so happy to have you here today. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Swami, I loved your story in Bliss Now, how you met Sri Ananda Mai Ma, and I wondered if you could share with our listeners here on Yoga TV your journey on how you came to find her. Well, thank you for asking me that question, Ariel. And, of course, you know, that was uh, pretty much the subject I discussed in my first book, Bliss Now. And the very first part of the book, I tried to share as best I could my story of how I ended up with Sri Ananda Moy Ma. And for those of you who have read my book, you know that I had been having dreams uh, about a beautiful woman who she would come into my dream life and say, I am your mother, come to India. So this kept occurring and reoccurring to the point where I actually finally went back and asked my mother, well, is that you? You know that I keep dreaming about. And thank goodness my mother was such an enlightened woman that she said, well, it's not me, but I think you do need to keep a journal because I think these are significant dreams, especially when you have one over and over. And so she gave me a blank book, and I started journaling about these dreams I would have with this beautiful woman with long black hair. And she kept saying, I'm your mother, come to India, come to India, and all different kinds of formats. So I finally ended up as a student at the University of California, Berkeley. And one of my wonderful teachers there was Dr. Haridas Chowdhury, who had started the California Institute of Asian Studies. So I kind of got up all my courage one day, and I went and told Dr. Chowdhury, you know, I'm having these recurring dreams about this beautiful woman who says that she's my mother and to come to India. And I told him and showed him my, my dream book and my, my notes on this, and Dr. Chowdhury started to cry. And he turned his head away from me and he said, well, my son, you have to go to India. And I will make arrangements for you. He said, uh, you know, I'm very close to the mother of the Sri Aurobindo Ashram. And I will write the mother immediately, send her your picture, and let's see what she says. So I received a letter back from the mother of Sri Aurobindo Ashram, headed off to India. It was arranged that I would have a grant. And I mean, this is in the 1960s when we just first kind of had Pan Am jets. So this was a really big trip. And uh, my parents and everybody just was so worried about me. I gave away all my material possessions. I had one little backpack, and I headed off around the world to India to follow this stream. I actually went to see the mother of Sri Aurobindo Ashram, and I told her my dream, and she was a very powerful teacher. But even the mother said, my child, your answer that you're looking for lies for you in the Himalayas. It is not here. So still, in this journey, I did not know mother. I still had not had the mind to see Ananda Moy Ma or to even know that she was an actual living presence until I got to the Himalayas and I was living with a group of sadhus in the Vrindavan forest and uh, we decided to make a pilgrimage to Rishikesh and then on to Dehradun and I was on those roads back in those days that were little tiny jungle roads just filled with flowers and birds and all kinds of wild animals including tigers everything and really my weight had fallen down to almost like 110 pounds and I was just living as a, you know, a child of the forest. And here came along this beautiful car one day and uh, uh, it was all draped with marigolds and I hadn't seen a car for months and months. So this was an unusual occurrence and the car came right towards me through the forest and I had just picked a big bouquet of flowers. So I went over to the car and the window went down and there was the woman I had been dreaming about all these years, just perfect, her face. I instantly recognized her. And she was very excited to see me, and she kept saying, Ram, 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 stop the car, Ram, Ram. And uh, I was pretty amused like that. I kind of had one of those New York moments where I said, you talking to me? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> am I Ram? <laughs> I didn't know who Ram was. And 
Lo and behold, the woman inside explained, This is Sri Ananda Moi Ma. Listen, the Divine Mother is speaking to you. And I said, Well, I don't speak Bengali. What is she saying to me? And she said, You must come closer to the car. Put your things in the back. You come and get in the car. And that was the beginning of my Leela with Sri Ananda Moi Ma. And in that journey to where she was going to speak in Dehradun and on to Rajport in the Himalayas, she explained the whole story how she said that there had been an old Swami named Ramananda, Swami Ramananda, who had passed away in 1948. And she had taken a vow with him that when he reincarnated, she would call him back and put him back on the path he had been in his previous lifetime. And she said, here is the boy that I've been calling since he was the age of nine. So all of those dreams, everything in my whole life at that moment, made complete sense. And I stayed with Mother, and just from that moment, uh, I found that she had a place in my heart, and that she and I were just in a complete and absolute state of oneness. So that was my story, how I found her, which was most, most amazing that I tried to share in Bliss Now. And what would you say was the most important teaching of Sri Ananda Mai Ma? Well, you know, Mother was such an unusual shining star in the firmament of Indian spirituality. She was really the first woman who was really taken seriously as a spiritual leader. You know, um, and, and of course there was Sarada Devi and other great souls there, but Mother became the guru of the president of the country. And uh, even when Jawahar Nehru, you know, was president, his wife Kamala Nehru came and lived in our ashram in Dehradun. So there were ministers of parliament, there were Mahatma Gandhi, Paramhansa Yogananda, Neem Karoli Baba, Sai Baba, all of the great masters were coming to see Ananda Moi Ma, and she was going to see them. And if I look at all of her teachings, and everything that she spoke upon. And Ma never wasted her breath. Her words were few. And when she spoke, she spoke with real intense impact. But I would think that of everything that she taught us, she taught of being in a state of love and bhakti and surrender. And she often told the story. She said, God is like sitting on a tree limb with you and as, as if there are two birds sitting there, okay? And one bird is dancing around and eating and singing and pooping and doing all the things that birds do, right? And the other bird is sitting there and watching this bird go through all the things he's doing and just waiting to be remembered. Because Ma said it's like this, God created all of this, all of this, and God can do every single thing for us, except He cannot make us love Him. He cannot make us remember Him because we have free will. So she said, in that way, you know, the greatest thing you can do with your life is every day remember God, remember your Ishta Devata, remember your higher power, remember me, you know, and that way we can enter your life and help you on so many different levels. So for this reason, she encouraged us to engage in bhakti yoga and bhakti practices and to engage in japa. And I'm going to say I traveled throughout India in all my 17 trips to India and all of the great spiritual personalities I met. I never ever met anyone quite at the level of Sri Ananda Moi Ma. And I will say in my 60 years of life, she is the most enlightened creature. I ever, ever encountered on this planet. And I absolutely came to know of her high, high state of nirvana, of Sahaj Samadhi and realization beyond all of that. I never stop, saw Mother stop engaging in her own spiritual practice, which was to do the yoga, to constantly be in japa and remembering God's name. So. She also demonstrated to us how to do it, how to be a great yogi. And she was constantly in the state of saying, Ram, 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 Ram. I never saw her at a moment when she wasn't chanting inwardly. 
as a great inspiration to see even her engage in that Leela of the remembrance of God. So I think that is her highest, highest teaching.